Hello there and hello to a new makeup brand I've been hoping would happen for years. Violette FR is a famous French makeup artist based in New York, one of my absolute favourites. She's the queen of colour moods, an expert tightrope walker between natural beauty and playful colour and texture, and the creator of the coolest YouTube channel. She was the international makeup designer for Dior Beauty, a product development consultant at Sephora, the global beauty director of Estee Lauder, and now she's the founder and designer of her very own Violette FR products. If I could have picked two people in the entire industry that I wished would create their own brand, Lisa Eldridge already launched lipsticks, so Violette was the one I was waiting for. The brand launched at the end of March after several years in development, and at first glance she'd basically created everything I'd ever hoped she'd create. Can't wait to hear what all of you think of it too. Violette wanted the aesthetic of the brand to be both totally natural and deeply creative, which fits that double life so many of us like to lead with our makeup. The first launch included makeup, skincare, hair care, and a fragrance. I purchased the cream highlighter, liquid lipstick, and five out of six liquid eyeshadow shades, but she also created a skincare cream spray, a dry shampoo brush, and a perfume. There are definitely touches of her 2018 Estee Lauder collaborations peeking through in her own brand, and the range just feels very violette. We've got her signature caramel casual shadow colours, pops of pink and coppery shimmer, a dewy glowy highlighter, and a bold red lip of course. The products do work well together, but I think of them more as feature pieces. Finding balance and spotlighting one element of a look is part of Violette's style. If you love a bold lip, keep the eyes more neutral, or if it's time for a bright, colourful eye, keep the lips low key. I'll include a brief comparison to her Estee Lauder collaborations at the end, and a quick note on shipping before we meet the products. Her website only ships to the US, Canada, France and the UK at the moment, so I sent my order to a friend in the US who kindly shipped it to Australia. On Eva, let's get glowing! Starting with the Bomb Shine Universal Highlighter Stick. This is described as a creamy balm that gives the skin a glow reminiscent of a neoclassical masterpiece, and it says it's designed to create subtle radiance. This little lipstick-like tube delivers the kind of dewy, glazed, healthy glow I love. I don't think she's done anything super unique in the grand scheme of dewy highlighters here, but it is a much more golden highlight than the usual universal champagne shade brands go for. You can see it applied on different skin tones on her website. Violette said she used to study neoclassical paintings in the Louvre in Paris, so this is her version of a master casting light on the skin with a paintbrush. She says it has a mirror pigment in it which shows up as very very fine shimmer or glitter. It catches and reflects the light, particularly in direct sunlight, so it can look a little glittery and a bit more noticeable than I was expecting. It's an easy twist up tube so it's perfect to swipe straight onto the skin, but you can also swirl your finger around on top then pat it on. Even when I swipe it straight onto the skin I always use my finger and gently pat or tap to blend it in. The texture feels dewy and balmy but not sticky, just slightly tacky like freshly moisturised skin. Add a touch to your cheekbones, the inner corners of the eyes, bridge of the nose and Cupid's bow. Next, Year Paint, which means eye paint. These are Violette's liquid eyeshadows and liners. They come in two finishes and two colour families. Three mattes that are more muted and natural, and three twinkling shades which are more dramatic shimmers. This formula is described as rich, highly pigmented colour that seamlessly blends onto eyelids, and they're meant to be long wearing and lightweight. They come in lip gloss looking tubes and have a long, flat, narrow doe foot. The box does try to warn us, highly pigmented is underlined, but these are very, very, very highly pigmented. This is not an effortless sheer style like Glossier Skywash or the Touch in Soul Pretty Filter liquid shadows I swatched recently, much more like a Danessa Myricks Colour Fix level of intensity, so you only need the tiniest bit if you're wanting to sheer this out all over the lid. Interestingly, I do find the twinkling shades slightly more sheer and less intense than the mattes. The good thing is if you love intense colour, you want to paint these on as a graphic liner, or you have a medium or darker skin tone, the colours are definitely strong enough to stand out. But if you're after that softer wash of colour vibe, bit of a different technique required. Here are the application instructions, then I'll share what I'd suggest instead. The brand says to glide the flat side of the applicator along the top lash line and quickly blend the pigment into the crease using fingertips or a brush. They say it's quick and easy. 
not necessarily that quick or easy sadly because it's just so intensely pigmented you're still going to be there blending for a long time the color just keeps going and going probably could have done with a tighter stopper inside to remove excess but now that you know that you can shift your approach to suit the look you're after for a much more subtle everyday style i remove all of the excess from the doe foot and only apply one small dot or dash on each eye then blend with my fingertips. I also only work on one eye at a time because it does set fairly quickly. Starting slow then adding a touch more along the lash line if I want to deepen the colour. With that lighter approach I do find the colour fairly easy to blend, it doesn't feel like you have anything on your eyelids and it has been really long wearing. Let's meet the colours. Tendre Corail is the lightest colour in the range but you'll see it's still intense until you shear it out. The name means tender coral and that description fits really nicely. This isn't a bright, summery, punchy, traditional coral. It's much more of a muted, almost sun-drenched, sun-burnt orangey peach. If you shear it out on the eyes, it can look a bit more like a warm pink. To Do has been a surprise hit for me. This is Violette's favourite and it might be mine too. The name To Do means all soft and it's designed to be a natural tan that suits all skin tones. Violette said she'd been dreaming of making a colour like this and perfecting the undertones for a long time. I think she's nailed it. Beautiful as a light layer on the eyes with a red lip. Caramel Show means hot caramel and that's exactly what's happening here. This is the deepest of the Matrio and it's much more toasty and rich than the other two. I was drawn to this one straight away. You know I always love a warm terracotta red toned brown but this is so intense I like the softest layer all over the eye and a touch more closer to the lash line. Moving into twinkling territory with Rose Dogo. It means Aurora Rose and this deep metallic magenta is one of the colours I instantly associate with Violette. She's created so many great pink looks like this over the years. It looks like a fairly solid metallic if you apply a thicker layer but it has such strong glitter when you shear it out. I almost can't tell if the glitter is pink or blue or silver, it's just so bright and reflective. Last but not least, Cuivre de l'Aube means Dawn Copper and again this is such a classic violet shade. She's inspired me to create many coppery shadow looks in the past. This is a fantastic copper with golden shimmer. You can see that the twinkling shades definitely sheer out a lot easier than the mattes and the colour isn't quite as creamy. Overall, your paint is so pigmented it's not going to suit liquid shadow beginners or give you a casual look straight from the tube. The good news is there's so much colour to work with so every shade will work on different skin tones and one tube is going to last you a crazy long time. Moving on to the Petal Bouche Matte. This liquid lipstick is meant to create matte rose petal lips. The shade is called Amour Fou, which means crazy love or wild love, and the description just says this is the shade of red. It was inspired by Violette's visits to the Jardin Bagatelle in Paris as a little girl where she spotted incredibly dark red roses and dreamed of recreating them. Now it's only fair to give a little liquid lipstick disclaimer here. I don't own many because I find a lot of formulas too dry, but I do make occasional exceptions such as the Sephora or a lip cream, a classic red Violette got me onto, but I'm generally drawn to more whipped, blurred, fluffier feeling matte liquid lip formulas like the Rare Beauty Lip Souffle or Chanel Rouge Allure Liquid Powder. I had hoped that would be the style of this formula. It's described as extremely velvety lip colour that replicates the velvet texture of a rose petal, so all that talk of velvet and petals made me think it might be a slightly softer whipped style, but this is more of a traditional liquid lipstick. It's probably a bit more lightweight and feels very thin on the lips but I do notice a little bit of a powdery feel. In fact I think her quest for velvet has tipped this into slightly dry territory for me. It's not necessarily drying because it's light but if I do rub them together it doesn't feel velvety or smooth, it feels a bit dry. It's also so pigmented again that you have to be really careful and precise so I definitely remove all of the excess from the doe foot and still get plenty of colour. I'd love to hear from any liquid lipstick addicts though, maybe this wears perfectly for you and I'm just too much of a whipped liquid lip lover. I find it so hard to say no to an intense dark red so I'll still wear this but I think her upcoming sheer matte lipsticks she's been teasing on Instagram called Bizu Balm will be more my style. Let's do a very quick Estee Lauder comparison. Sadly these past collections aren't around anymore but I hope this is helpful if you own some of them and want to know how her new products compare. Violette created two glowy pots in her past Estee Lauder collaborations. The La Rose Soft Glow for Lips and Cheeks which was a super subtle thin balmy highlight with a tiny touch of pink. 
Then the sheer scandal eye gloss, which you could use as a highlighter too, had much more of a wet gel-like texture and some iridescent pink shine to it. So I'd say the new bomb shine on the right is almost a cross between these two textures with a more golden glow and a more convenient stick format. The eyeshadows Violet created in the past were palettes and crayons, but there are certainly similar caramel, coppery and pink tones running through each group. We had the first Poppy Sauvage coppery pink glitter, some rich metallic powders and a crayon from La Dangereuse, then two of the new twinkling shades, Rose de Roi and Cuivre de Lobe. The tan brown powder in the Poppy Sauvage palette is definitely one of To Do's ancestors. Then two liquid lip cousins. The Pure Colour Envy liquid matte lipstick in Poppy Sauvage was the vibrant bright red she created. I actually didn't pick this up when the collection first launched in early 2018. I came across it later that year and gave it a try and I actually find it more comfortable than the deeper petal bouche matte she just made. Something about the texture of the Estee Lauder just feels a bit more creamy and smooth. Time for all of you to share your Violet FR feelings in the comments. I'd love to hear your first impressions of the brand, if it's what you expected from her or if you thought she'd go in a slightly different direction. Please tell me what you've tried so far or what you have your eye on and what else are you hoping she'll create? I can't wait to see where she takes the brand in future and I cannot wait for those Bizu Balm sheer matte lipsticks. Thanks for watching, see you next time.